Spring is always that Goldilocks season where I can't quite tell whether I love it or hate it. You probably know what I'm talking about. Sometimes that snow, it's just not melting at all. And other times it's melting way too much. But if you look hard, I'm willing to bet you can find some that's just right. Today, it's all about snow melt, folks. So let's go. Like most of my weekend adventures, we're in the most futile race against the sun. And I never win, but I always try. And that white reflection on the dashboard was telling me that I might have jumped the gun going north this early, but I needed to scout. There's a couple options I want to check out to gauge future adventures, so I figured it wouldn't be a total loss. But it would seem the warm weather down south was a bit misleading, and spring was still very much winter. So, pressing on into plan A, I could feel regret crawling up my spine with each crunch in the snow. The drifts were still deep, and the air temps outside the city I'd been tracking were much lower than anticipated. This was the part of the Goldilocks story where the snow hadn't melted at all. Getting down to the river, that was the final nail in the coffin. The further upstream I moved, the ice and snow almost completely covered the stream. And this was flat out dangerous. There is no way to tell where it's safe to walk and the chances of falling in are very high. Turning a few bends, I decided to be smarter to abort plan A and head towards plan B rather than fall through the ice in a box canyon. So it was time to pop that parachute. Now, post holding my way out of this vertical death slide, it was not very fun, but we made it back to the truck without losing too much daylight. And as I was sitting there getting nice and warmed up, the bad vibes seemed to just continue. On our way to plan B, the road that I thought was public turned out to be private, so it was now on to plan C. Going through plan A, B, and now C before 10 a.m. is usually a pretty bad sign, but bear with me folks, it gets worse. Pressing on to our roadside plan C, the sun was strong and it was clear to see that the snow here had been melting for quite a while. This was the Goldilocks scenario where the snow, it was melting way too much. We managed to see a fish, but other than that, the snow melt was really starting to pick up and I was not confident in this spot either. When the snow melt enters the system, it has a tendency to lower the already cold water temperatures. I learned this lesson hard fishing the driftless region in the spring last year. So in my experience, this gives fish lockjaw and they hunker down so hard. So on top of fighting slippery boulders and chunks of ice floating down this pressured roadside stream, I was fairly certain the fish were not interested in my measly offerings. I knew I needed to pull my reserve chute and reach way back in my bag of tricks for an afternoon option. I really hope any of you watching right now can learn from my mistakes and understand the importance of having multiple options locked and loaded. You need to maximize your time on the water, but I'll get off my soapbox for a second because now that we're here, it was clear to see that the sun was high in the sky and this little tailwater section, it was way ahead of its neighboring streams. Nearly all the snow in the valley had melted and it seemed like spring it was gonna be here any day now. And it should be said, there's a reason this is my last option. I do my best to avoid tailwaters just because they're so easy to access, which usually means every Tom, Dick, and Harry with a fly rod is gonna be fishing them. But for some reason, this little stream was empty and making my way close to a nice bend, I honed in on some dimples being made on the surface of the water. I didn't wanna get my hopes up too high, but I eagerly rigged up a cheeky double dry and made my move. Scenarios like this require the maximum amount of stealth. Turn that knob all the way up to 11, even if that means having to crawl on all fours. I do it all the time. These fish, they were so dialed in, but I could spook them with one false move. Luckily, I managed to get into comfortable casting position with little to no detection. And with one solid cast into this active pod, I finally found my mark on the day. It's funny how all that running around this morning 
seemingly just melts away as soon as you get your hands on that first fish of the day. Well, there we go. The skunk is off. And a very special note is that was our first fish on the brand new ant rod. So, gotta give a huge shout out to Ant. Just christened this bad boy and it's ready to go into the arsenal. But we gotta take the plastic off and make it official. Let's try and replicate that. Getting back into casting distance, I could see a familiar blob still slithering under that log from earlier. I must admit, that hiding place, it was pretty nice, but my midge, it must have been nicer. I'm kind of shocked we got two out of there. That was awesome. He came up from under that log. That's so cool. Let's get him back. Now that the bottom of the pool is blown out, I reset a bit further upstream and found a lovely little treat. This aggressive rainbow was absolutely munching. Notice how it takes flies off the surface as well as under the water. This bow was the definition of keyed in. It was going so far out of its way to grab any and all hatching bugs. So watching this, I felt so confident in what I had on. The top dry was a perfect adult phase bitch, and the soft tackle just sat below the water to mimic a hatching midge. The high vantage point, I was able to cast directly downstream, and without much hesitation, he smacked that adult midge. Nothing to write home about as far as size goes, but it's just so cool getting to see this problem in front of you, and then successfully solving it. Well, two browns and a rainbow, how cool is that? We got one on the bottom and two on the top fly and our day has turned right around. Three busts this morning, kind of a really tough start to the day. But yeah, this afternoon it's really turned around and we finally found some productive water. And this little tail water, it uh, seems to stretch pretty dang far. So I'm gonna keep following it down. And uh, I will say, it reminds me a lot of like Iowa or Wisconsin, just the driftless in general, just the way it kind of meanders like this. I love it. Love it, love it, but yeah, let's uh, stop talking, get our hike on. I feel like it's starting to become the rule rather than the exception, but keeping true to myself, I left fish to find fish. The further downstream I got, the stream really got skinny. And it was just more narrow and shallow than it was upstream. So with lots of sign of angling pressure, I decided to double back and maybe head to where I actually saw fish. This easy access, I mean, it's the definition of double-edged sword. Right now, it was really helping me out, but I can only imagine what this place looks like during the summer. I was a little shocked that I hadn't completely shut down this pool of active fish, but with a nice cast, I managed to pluck another brown with the soft tackle this time. I was very, very happy to get him, but he flopped out before I could get a good look at him. And with that fish back, it felt much more natural heading upstream but the further we got, it was clear that beavers, they were very busy in this tailwater. They had dammed up a few parts of the stream, which made for excellent beaver ponds, and we scored. I was able to spot and stalk one more rising fish on the day and trick it with that same adult midge. With no more fish caught on the day, I would like to take this opportunity to again preach the importance of backup plants, especially during this time of year. With snow melt crushing our western waters and even runoff from storms in other parts of the country, spring can be one tough cookie to crumble. And with limited time on the water, planning ahead can save your day, kind of like it saved mine. Well, as the wind is picking up, our tiny tailwater adventure is over. As always, folks, thank you so much for sticking around. I feel like I'm a broken record here, but I mean it. I appreciate the support. 
on all the different platforms, but especially here on YouTube. You know, the more you like and they're, they're commenting and subscribing, I guess it's some weird algorithm thing, but I actually do enjoy talking with you guys in the comments. So let me know what you guys think of these adventures. I always like talking and yeah, go check out the Instagram, the Patreon, the Discord, you know the freaking deal there. And before I sign off, I just gotta say, go clean up some trash, bring an extra bag along and if you see anything, just pick it up. I made an extra effort today to try and do that. We need to be stewards of our land and yeah, try and make it better than when we hiked in. So with that, I'll step off my soapbox and say wherever you find yourself, be it on a teeny tiny tailwater in New Mexico or in your backyard, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.